Hi, everybody. Um, welcome back to This is Temporary podcast. Uh, this has been a really, really, really important week for our country and for our world um, in the grand movement we've seen um, for civil rights, equal rights. And, and right now, I'm really grateful to have my friend Marvin LaViolette with me. He is an actor and an equal rights activist in unity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, Marvin, Thank you for being here. Tell me, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Marvin Laviolette. <laughs> Usually, everyone butchers my name. That's why I love it so much. He does. <laughs> um, <laughs> just overall, you know, citizen of the planet Earth. You know, peace, love, and growth. Mm-hmm. Unity and growth always. Uh, yeah, so I'm an actor. And newly found human being, I could say. With mm-hmm. everything going on right now, I still who am who I am, but at the same time, born into something new, I can say. With everything that's going on and where it's led everything and is actually taking me right now. So, yeah. I love that. You know, I, I started to say to someone the other day, I, I read something that was about how 2020 is one of those years that is forcing us to reflect and I'm I'm so grateful um what initially started off as seeming like um and it still has had its grief and its tragedy and I'm not discounting that but um it's a year of exponential growth and transformation that has been needed um for hundreds of years um in multiple ways so um Marvin we first met on um uh, Death Cast. It was a horror film that we were filming in Florida, which is where you are now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not LA right now. Everyone probably in Van Nuys is like, whoops. <laughs> left. Like everyone is just like, yep. No, no, no. You've been in a lot yeah. of places, and and quarantine, like yeah. we were talking about, has kept us from either being quarantined with family, quarantined away from family. So now you're finally able to be with your family this week. Yes. Which is awesome. Been, I haven't seen them since Christmas, so it's God. been tough. Wow. So you're finally getting some good family rest. I'm so grateful for that. Um, But we met filming Death Cast. And I remember, um, were were we, we were the first to either to meet or to bond because we would go and do workouts together when we were at the condo place. (laughs) But but I, I was really, really I loved that time together because um, I got, we both got to open up and and talk about how we've both been through a divorce. And um, that feels like, especially at a younger age, like a weird thing to talk about or go through or feels like it ages you. And it does in some ways. (laughs) Um, But, you know, in addition to that, I remember us briefly talking about mental health. And I love that because if anyone knows me, I, I shoot straight and I try to talk about mental health right away with everyone. Um, I can't not talk about it, but uh, it's always it's always very good to meet someone who will open up in return. And you were open towards me, and I, I'm very thankful for that because it, it broke down barriers and it made us feel safer and more understood and more seen and more validated. And that's what this podcast is about, you know. So tell us a little bit about um, your mental health journey um, so far as a human. Whew, as a human. <laughs> All right, if my life was on a timeline and it had like a drawn out timeline on a wall. Yeah. The beginning would start off, like I would say, uh, there's no such thing as average. It would be at the line. And as my 20s, like at my teens started, yeah. it started spiking. Okay. And probably my 20s was probably like bland because I was very numb. Okay. The reason we'll get on to earlier or later on. And by now, yes, you wouldn't agree that I'm 33 years old. Or yeah. I'm now 34. So I, I have forget. a lot of, yeah, yeah. So you've oh, got yeah, a gap over young. me. We both look young for so, our age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Well, young teenage girls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, basically, um, everything's spiking and everything hitting like a waterfall, everything I've been through. So my mental, I'd say I'm, I'm at a, a mental annuity level, 10 being the highest. I'm okay. at a pretty high eight because you know no one ever hits that ten. That's just right. Stupid. Yeah. But it's everything right now. I'm I, if if me speaking, there's a guy inside of my head, me number two, right. watching on a TV, oh. hitting rewind now on the on the rest of my life, and actually backtracking and talking about how I feel wow. at that particular moment and fully actually express it compared oh, to wow. you know as a man as a black man like you know be strong, chill up, stop acting like a little bitch. 
anything sure. like that, like, yo, tighten up. Oh, yeah, y'all broke up? That's cool, man. Smoke this. Versus yeah. Sitting down, trying to find the root of what happened, what I did wrong, taking accountability on my own. Yeah, you know, I'm a little ADHD, so you know, I'd be welcome. Same. You're um, good. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, it's through that moving around, able to realize what needs to be done and being at peace. Yeah. Because as long as, I will say this in every subject we talk about, as long as my heart isn't aligned with my actions and I'm moving forward, I have to be at peace with that. I love and God, that. where I'm at, I couldn't be anywhere else. So, and I'm here for a reason. God put me here at this moment, dealing with this as this person, myself, for a reason. Yeah. Going with it. Well, hey, I love who you are. And I, I love who you were years ago when we met as well. But it's, it is cool that I have seen that growth in you. Um, and, and I don't know if from afar, you know, that's the fun thing about knowing people for years is you do get to watch. You either grow apart or you grow together. You watch people grow from afar. And it's been amazing to see, especially this past week, um, you know, I've told you this, I know, but I am just so incredibly proud of you um, for the inspiring, powerful leadership role you have stepped into with this equal rights movement. Um, uh, and for those of you who don't know Marvin, um, he has been on the front lines of so many rallies and protests and marches um, in Atlanta um, and all around Atlanta um, uh, demanding um, for you know, equal rights uh, and, and for what is due to our black community um, for hundreds of years. Um, and I, in my own white privilege, I will be brief in, in talking on this, but um, I've learned a lot in this week and, and I'm amazed to see the grace and compassion that leaders like Marvin have stepped up with um, towards people of all races in dealing with this movement. So tell us a little bit about this past week for you and, and everything leading up to your role in this. Okay. Um, this past week into the role of all this, all right. Different. I would say I'm on the, of another episode of Marvin's life, uh, season 12 <laughs> of episode of the mid season finale on episode five, basically <laughs> stepping into it. Of I guess I don't, I don't, I act on my emotions and now the new, the new self I found, I act on it and obviously careful thinking and using discernment. I found yeah. myself in other roles that I would have never imagined myself doing as 10-year-old me, as two-year-old yeah. me. Back two years ago, I'd be looking at it like, hey, really? Right, <laughs> let's, let's go with it. So it's just like um, I, I created a nonprofit organization, uh, Wicked, W-C-I-D, what mm -hmm. can I do? So basically it was just the resource. It's just me showing up for protesters. I'm at every protest. Um, you know, uh, you know, I have, I know my amendment rights. I'm, I, I'm, I arm myself, you know, in protection. Never got to use it, anything like that. Um, but at the same time, meeting other like individuals, posting other stuff through, trying to watch not only with these protests out here, there are a lot of antagonizers. Right. People that, you know, start rights, right? Start a different way. I'm not going to point fingers who and who, but right. there are, there, just because you protest doesn't mean you riot. And right. obviously riots are, uh, unspoken language uh, language of the own of the unheard mm -hmm. so that goes out in so many ways so through there teaming up with other people like hey man i saw you at the other protest the other day and then linking up hey man i saw you hey man and you was a trip on that light post dog like <laughs> but at the same time <laughs> going off on that meeting up with like individuals and coming up with the organization wicked basically everyone wants there's people that want to help but they're not speaking out or they want to help and they don't know where to start right. we would step in at that organization basically figuratively holding your hand and helping you make a decision or showing you this is the option that you can do option one, two, three, or whatever, four, you can donate to this, you can do that, show up here, right. get to this protest. Obviously protest is just the first step, first step right. beyond that. And like we would get, oh, you want to help? Yeah, you can donate. You can show up, you can be a body, you can be a voice, you can speak yeah. out, speak high school, go just learning. People, right. I have a lot of other friends that want to know like what's hurting me, what's going on, that are my, I call my first class citizen friends. Yeah. So at the same time, I'll be like, yo, like, you see, I'm hurting. You know me. Yeah. This is stuff that's been beyond me. My people, look it up. Right. Sometimes look it up. Yeah. Because then you're being privileged to being all of us, even as first, me, second class citizen. Yeah. And the first class citizens, we're all used to being spoon fed. Right. You're right. Doctrine. But and being praised. Time, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so nowadays, look for the work. I'm 34 years old. I remember back in 97, 
uh, my my father had a um he had a, like a library room. We didn't have the internet. We had encyclopedias. Wow. So I remember getting the fourth edition, and I was like, oh crap! Now I got to catch up on the next ten years in this book. So this is what got updated. Probably eight months ago was updated. I'm reading it now, but it's encyclopedia. Look me up. We have the power in our hands. I'm talking to you on one of it right here. Right. Everything we need to know is on here. Yeah. And we're not appreciative of that. We want to be spoon fed info. Right. We don't want to do the work. Well, people want the Spark the Notes version, you know. Yeah. And that's yeah, every, that's yeah. a, a really bad thing. I think that's been built into um, our minds is that we can just Spark Notes everything. And I'm like, mm, this one you're not going to get away with Spark Notes, okay? Yeah. You know, it's like you said, people have to take accountability. And that's been my thing um, is, is, and I may be annoying about it, but I'd rather be loud and in people's faces um, uh, than silent. <laughs> um, yeah. oh, but it's, it's silent. yeah, <laughs> but I'm like, uh, you know, there is so much accountability and responsibility and reformation to be made, reparations to be made for what we did, the white people did, what white supremacy has done. And so you're right. We shouldn't be, absolutely should not be reaching out to our black friends and saying, hey, can you educate me on this? Because that's not your job. You know, um, you, you talk about uh, <laughs> something on to top on, um, my words are getting, I, I want to get really oh, yeah, passionate yeah. and like hesitant at the same time. Um, but there's so much black trauma around what has happened to the black community for your whole lives and for your ancestors' lives. And not to mention on top of having the, there's pros and cons to the media. And I, and in the 13th um, documentary on Netflix, I love that they acknowledge that with the permission of the families of these victims, um, they were able to show what has happened to all of these people who we say say their names because it's people being having to look and watch those videos and being forced to accept their humanity and acknowledge that that's police brutality, that that is murder, that that is not okay, and that that is a, a, a product of our systemic oppression and racism. Yeah. So, so I mean, I cannot imagine being um, black and having to watch that and thinking that could be me, that could be my brother, that could be my sister, that could be my mom, that could be my son. Um, I can't imagine just because of the color of your skin. And so uh, what, what do you have to say that you're comfortable saying about trauma because a mental health is one thing and trauma plays a part in that um, and infecting our mental health. And I know there's been a lot of comments on how um, our nation's way of profiting on, you know, mass incarceration and basically using yeah. that instead of funding mental health that is needed um, to, to look at the part of trauma alone. What are you comfortable talking about with on that topic as a black man? Um, honestly, I would say bring it to me as it comes because life in those situations always come to me as it comes. Yeah. I've been prepared for it. it. I would say I wasn't all the way prepared for it as most black families because I came from an immigrant black family. Because right. Haitian Americans. Yeah. My parents weren't in this country. They, yeah. they came from Haiti. They came here as students. So what they went and from what they told me on top of that, being from another country and being younger and then fitting into a weird situations as I am, like, I, you, yeah, you, yeah, I know you know this about me. You can't tell my accent unless I'm speaking Creole or French. Yeah. You can't tell my accent. It but is it was, fun when it comes out, crazy. though. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this how I feel. I feel my guy. Okay. My pato, my pato. Okay. okay. But I no, at, at, at the same time, it was like, I was being younger. I had to hide and felt it hurt. It, it's just so much pain. And now I could see as a man why we're so resilient and we've been through so much and still we have so much so much untold of us there's so much strength in us mm -hmm. and it, it's, but it hurts so much it is yeah. hard it would take a life trying to explain it. uh but just coming through that just being a 10 year old boy in, America, in new york in brooklyn and like getting made fun of like just different just different for so many stuff getting stuff put on me for i wanted to be a white friend but then why i couldn't play those other games or my neighbor i walk i was in a, i would say there weren't that many black people in my neighborhood uh mm -hmm. at that time uh, let's go. I went to the hood. I went to a very privileged neighborhood to mm -hmm. all around. I've been through many abuse. Family that's been 
had money, losing it all, losing again, going through struggles, hardship. So being in there and walking up to a kid's house where a 10-year-old friend I, I just bonded with because I just thought, hey, that's dope. I relate to you from doing this. Completely different. That's what I would find an interest. And being friends with him, going up, running up to his uh, doorway, meeting his parents, and like, hey, what's up, Marvin? Hey, Marvin. Hey. And the first thing they say, where are your parents at? Like, well, why are you, like, how'd you get here or something? I'm like, I live next door. Wow. Like, automatically assuming where I'm from. I'm like, I live next door. That house is right next to you guys. Wow. Versus, uh, I was talking to my brother earlier today, and he's just laughing about the neighborhood he lives in now. Um, everyone is like keeping up with the Joneses. -ish. And the other day, he went outside, and it's a Florida day, like 93 degrees, just sweaty, it's hot. He looks at his grass and he mows it. And as he's mowing it, his neighbor walks over and he's like, Hey, why are you mowing your lawn? It's like, it's, it's hot out here. It's hot out here. He's like, you got to do it sometime. And literally an hour later, like it, it, it dawned on the guy who jumped on it. And later on, him going to mow his lawn. And then next thing I know, every other neighbor's mowing their lawn in the neighborhood. I'm like, why? Hmm. If he was black, if he wasn't black and he did that, would you still mow your lawn? Would you still want to watch your day? Or like hmm. the way you look at him? Yeah. Versus like just hardships we just walk into and then we look at so many different routes. Um, the last event I could say that happened to me about a day, the day before protests had began, I'm out, um, I'm out at a boat dock with some friends. We're kicking out and we're just hanging out in uh, a country or part of Georgia. Mm. So we're just hanging out over there and I come back in to get through the gate and I'm trying to call my buddy to open the gate. So there's a line of cars behind me. It's dark, it's dark. Um, so I just reverse. I let the car go in front of me. I go in after him, and a car's whamming his headlights at me. Like, so I'm looking. I got like a big truck and lights and stuff. So I'd be like, oh, all right, let me turn my high beams off. Whatever my father's yeah. like. I turn them off, and he's flashing. Long story short, I'm reversing my truck in so a lot, and the truck drives and just rushes in front of me. So I still have, I have a dash camera, so I have the same the whole thing recorded. So a truck comes out, and you know, a white dude comes out, like, um, not going to stereotype him, like big beard, everything. You can tell right. what kind of area he's from. He comes out of the truck and he's stepping out of here. So I open my door a jar a little bit so he can see my face. He can see me. And I happen to have like my buddy Anthony, you know, a white dude. He's just funny. He ain't really white. He look white, but he's just funny. <laughs> he just goes on there and he sees, he notices the white, white guy with me. And then that's when he comes up and still asks me, like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what do you mean what I'm doing? It's a boat dock. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, I've never saw you around here. I've never seen you from around here. Um, and, and he's like, you're, and he's like, catches himself. He's like, your truck looks different. I never seen your vehicle out here before. I was like, what does it matter? Are you neighborhood watch or anything? He's like, no, whatever. And it could have escalated in so much ways. I still had to hold myself where I was at. Right. My buddy was pissed because he's never seen anything like that. And then he sees. I mean, he don't have to say anything to me. He just knows. He understands. And I look back at him. And I was like, yo, if you weren't here, this would have ended up completely different. Yeah. So many other ways and <laughs> stuff like that. Just like. I know the dangers and the stuff that's out there. Just, just be hit with events like that every day, knowing that every day I come out, something can happen to me just because of the way I am. And it's systematic. It's been since we've yeah. been, people say it's coming up different times. It's always, always been around since we, uh, we mm -hmm. came over this country on ships. It's always been mm -hmm. that way, whether our police, a.k.a. they were slave wranglers before they were police. Right. The other way, the institution out where the holders are at, there are now prisons now. And that's a whole different way because we're, that is still slavery now. Yep. The government still profits off of these prisons. Right. These workers Plus, making six to nineteen cents an hour, making license plates, or making a fucking wallet, or anything right. like that, and anyone just profiteering on is just systematic racism that we're right. still dealing with right now. They're so just getting away with it under the Thirteenth Amendment. <laughs> yes. It's just a lot of everything just needs to be reformed. I can get into absolutely into that for days and why. But absolutely. yeah, to answer your question, yeah, it is. It is. It will take a life. It feels like with the pain to explain it as black men, it will take a life. I'm so sorry, Marvin. I, I'm, I just think, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I don't have many words past that because in normally, like when talking about mental health, because of, I'm a bipolar person, I'm normally able to relate to people and, and racism because of the color of my skin is an area I cannot relate. I can't understand the oppression. I can't understand the grief. I can't understand um, the, like you said, the trauma that's a lifetime of, of pain. But what I can do now is, is acknowledge what is going on and, and put aside my white privilege, my white fragility, and be an anti-racist activist along or, or ally alongside your activism and, um, and, and, 
and reform and, 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 and know, like we talked about, that it is a marathon. It is not a, a race. It's not, it's something that's going to take daily discipline, um, especially for, um, like you were saying, first class citizens, the, the people who do have this, like, I think last week, and it, it is, it is frustrating that it, it, like, why now? Like, why not a hundred years ago? Why not 400 years ago? Why not, you know, uh, last year when this, you know, you know, it's like, why yeah. is it happening now? But like you said, and you made a very important point before we started this podcast, actually, you were like, but the point is it is happening now and we are getting everyone's voices together and, and the movement and the change that, um, that the black community has deserved forever has it's 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 a human right for equality there is no difference um between people uh it's one human race um so yeah i i'm i'm so sorry um and i'm so grateful that you are sharing your your story and and your your heart because it's amazing your your heart is so compassionate so filled with grace so filled with fire and or, sorry i just i mixed two words i said passion and fire <laughs> fuel fire. and fire I, uh, uh, I mean i just <laughs> i have so many emotions built into this and it's not and it, it's it's the human you know like fight to for equality right now but um like i said i can't even personally understand and so all i can say is i'm sorry and i am am with you and with our country our world in this fight um but you know something you mentioned that it, it was really interesting to me is we both were talking about at the beginning of this year, 2020, we probably weren't in very good places on the inside. We weren't feeling great. I know I was in a depression um, and I wasn't feeling motivated. And I think oftentimes when we're faced with something that's much bigger than ourselves, a purpose um, that we can be a part of, it can pull us out of a depression. And you said you went through a major transformation leading up to this movement. Um, what was that like for you this year? Um, on season 12 of the life of Marvin's episode five, <laughs> or as you say, that was episode one. That's the start okay. of the season 2020 <laughs> the year of clarity. Um, yeah. it was, it was, it was rough. I Tim, I was coming into a new year, uh, going through like a new rep, like agent representation change. Um, or, and I was just coming out of like personal life. Like I was dealing with a lot of family issues because long story short, I, I'm, it's not wanted, but I didn't never wanted it, but I still appreciate where I'm at. I've become like a family pillar. I've, I'm like, I'm literally the middle child. I was the middle yeah, me child. Too. My, uh, my <laughs> siblings. Then out of all my cousins, I was the middle child. Like oh, wow. I, I always end up being the middle child. So, and I always, I never, I never really fit in. I, yeah. feel, I love my family, but I, I never really that. fit in. I was oh. always like the artist, you know. I'm not yeah. going to about my brothers or everything like that, anything like that. But I, <laughs> you know, I grew up, I grew up, I could say hood eccentric. Yeah, <laughs> my Afrocentric dude, but I mean, very different. Yeah. So I, I can, I can, I can blend in, but I never found where I was going. I always wanted yeah. a, a people please. So yeah. from all those events coming into there to uh, like, my, my, I don't know what's going on in my career as an artist, as an actor, like we all know that uh, coming out of stuff that would promise, not promise, going through stuff with my family and I can't be there and get it done. Emergencies happening, I can't be there and get it done. That burden on me, I'm not able to express it. I think I was going through like a bad breakup at the time and I don't do many relationships because I'm very focused, but I ended up going through like a bad breakup, trying to come through that, dealing with my career, dealing with who I am, finding out stuff about myself, little stuff triggering me, I call triggers yeah. or anything yep. to come at me. I can go back to the past or anything like that. Feel those. And I was depressed, just hating myself more than anything because now I was coming, I was trying to come at truth with everything, accepting. When there's a problem, you first need to accept. I came up with that, accepting what was wrong, what happened already, where I am, because you can't make a change if you don't accept. So accepting, learning myself, which was tough. And I give a shout out to one of my very close friends who's I'm close. He's like a big, the big brother I never had. And he likes to play devil advocate. advocate. Sure. He likes to play devil's advocate. Yeah. 
and I never met I never met a person caring enough to, at that level to play devil's advocate when you like really like get in it but out of love. Right. So right. able to help see stuff from a third point perspective, not blaming, finding to take accountability of my own actions. Someone could be wrong, the other person could be wrong so many other ways. Whatever. That's on them to do. What can I do to change? So then that put a lot of opening and understanding on me to know what can I do? What can I do? Right. What can I do? So I can do this. I can do that. Why not just do it instead of thinking about it or drowning in it? And yeah, it's hard. Easier said than done. But yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard to this day to go through it. But all we have to do is keep pushing forward because mm-hmm. we'll never be who we wanted to be in the past anymore. That person right. is dead. That person is gone. Yeah. You can take aspects of oneself and apply it to where we are to build out who you're going to be ahead of time. So Definitely. just been just doing that into breakups, into being blessed again with work, being busy, yeah. busy where I, literally the only time I had to myself was boarding an airplane. Instantly. Wow. So then I was But what an amazing, that yeah, that's a blessing, but also yeah. people don't see that that normally too doesn't give you the time to focus on your self-care because you're so yeah. busy, you know? Yeah. So it's a double-edged sword. On the outside. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm battle. Yep. And yes, you, as an artist, you do use pain to express yourself. Sometimes there's a pain where you can't do anything. Yeah. All you can do is like literally sit with yourself yeah. and literally sit with myself in time, not talking to anyone, be in isolation. But then say what the problem is. Cause this year was the first year I'm able to express myself, like really sit down and express myself. Like Lacey, you're very one of those few people that I actually express myself to. And that mm-hmm. was hard for me when we met and we were just going, like going through all this stuff. Like, yeah, I'm able to understand, but I would talk very broad versus hitting the hammer on the nail. Like, what's up? Hey man, how you day, man? What's good, man? Hey Marv, what's good, man? How you day going? Instead of just being like, I'm cool. But on the surface, really being able to say, I'm not, I, man. Right. Like, I feel this way, but I'm doing this about it. Mm-hmm. I feel this way, but mm-hmm. I think I could do something about this. I am doing something about it. Just because I'm doing something about it doesn't mean it's going to change that second. Right. Eventually in time it will if I keep finding myself consistent. Yeah. But yeah, speaking prayer every day, meditating, uh, just reading books, you know, just learning really what self-love was. Yeah. Like a giving person. I was such a giving person that I was like, narcissistic in a way. Yeah. Well, I would say egocentric for you instead, because I used to say the same thing, but then I studied narcissistic because I think you and I, I think a lot of actors are like us where we might go into our egocentric layers where we're like, oh, it's my time to focus on myself and what I'm doing and what matters for me and stuff like that. But narcissism is different. Narcissism is lacking in empathy and you're, you're an empathetic person, you know? So I, I, I'll challenge you there because my therapist got me to do the same towards me. He goes, Lacey, don't call yourself that. He was like, you might be egocentric at times. He's like, a lot of artists have to be in order to believe in themselves when no one else will, you know? Yes. So, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Which that was hard to do in general going yeah. into the field of acting because I used to still, I used to give so much when there's nothing left for myself. Yes. Um, and yeah, coming into terms with that, which I was doing, coming into terms with that with a friend, he's seeing it at a, a very, probably out of all the people I've ever met in my life, I've only met him, knew him for a year. He ended up being a roommate of mine wow. in Atlanta, and we just know each other by high and by basis. But then circumstance, I ended up moving in over there, and like I never met someone like that, like, like, yo, they're like, there are some dope people out there like that really care. And yeah. can like, find out more about myself because then I can accept versus like, yeah, I'm having a girlfriend, listening to everything through there, right. and still being in that relationship, but something completely different where I, I really have someone, like, really have someone in your corner, like, yeah. for the, for the, like, for the better, even, like, every, even, like, we have yelling arguments, we about to swell up on each other, everyone in the room think about the fight, it's like, I love you, motherfucker, man, yeah. fuck you, like, like, I love you, motherfucker, I love you, too, like, 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 I'll beat the shit out of you, but then I'm gonna come and make sure I get you, like, an ice pad and just chill, you want some tea, yeah. girl? I got this love. Like, I love you, man. <laughs> Like, I love you, man. And I'm mad. I love you, man. I'm mad because I love you, man. Like, let's sit down. Like, take this info. You're going to hear it. You don't have to take all of it. You can take 1% of it. Yeah. You can take 99% of it, but you're going to hear it. It's kind of love. <laughs> I'm not criticizing you, know, nothing, but you need to hear this. Yeah. Like, shut down and shut up when it comes to bad. So, like, like, being a person, like, how bad do you want to, I, how bad I want to get this yeah. out to you, just like anything I find in life. You'll right. find out how much you really are passionate about something. If you just get up and do it and how it makes you feel. Sometimes mm-hmm. you don't even know how you feel about it until you get it done. And like, oh, I am doing this. And I'm at peace with that. Yeah. Like, I give 100%. Like, you're going to want the relationship, whether it's platonic, romantically, or just right. high and by, or a conversation we need to work with, just how much do you really want it to work? Absolutely. Like, sometimes every, 
Yeah. You will apply yourself. You know, I love that because it, it it's something I've mentioned, I think on this podcast before, but um, in relation to that, I said that on my mental health journey, I had to find my self-love and self-care journey in tandem with my mental health journey in order to heal, in order to, to grow and to learn. And it's basically what you were just saying is like, I know you and I know how hard of a worker you are. Um, but I also know people. Yeah, you challenge me. You inspire me. I'll be seeing you very crazy. I don't want to talk we'll, be on, we'll be on set. We'll be on set. And she'll be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Laugh the fool, laugh the fool. And then... <laughs> I tap in and out. I think it's. I think. I don't know if it's technique or um or my bipolar that lends a hand to that one, but <laughs> but I I I guess to add to that um to see how hard of a worker you are and then to watch you go through a transition and a transformation where you started working just as hard on yourself, on your self love like that, like you said, that provides you with that passion in every other area of life, you know? And I loved at the beginning of this podcast, one of the first things you said was, um, I, I finally have started to confront my feelings and I've started to sit with them. And that's one of the hardest things to do, Um, especially in a year like this. Um, A lot of people are tempted to say, I don't want to feel this right now. And they distract themselves. They look away. They, um, they, you know, substance abuse or whatever. Um, And, and it's like to be able to, um, to be able to sit with your feelings as a man, especially, um, is a beautiful, powerful thing. It's a transformative thing. And like you said, it, it's cool to see that you had a friend along the way to be there for you, to be that accountability and reinforcement, because I've needed that as well, you know, along my journey. I've needed the, this, I don't have a large group, you know, but, but in my core group, I have a couple people who will check in on me and be like, hard on me when I need them to be that tough love that comes from, like you said, not a judgmental place, but a, Hey, I know you want this. I know you love yourself. So this is what, this is how you should speak to yourself. This is what you should do, you know? So, um, uh, you know, tell, tell us about, you mentioned a little bit about prayer and meditation. And I know we both love working out and I know that's a very important part of mental health. It is, you know, remaining yeah. our sand, like feeling sane, um, and, and, you know, releasing those endorphins. Um, what other things do you do, uh, or have you done this year to help ground yourself and to feel better? Um, to help ground myself and feel better is yes. I consider myself an intellectual, so I like to think and look stuff up, but I'm lazy. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. And <laughs> it takes a pause. It takes a pause that between just waking up and not wanting to look on Instagram or look at my text sure. messages. People blew up my phone last night. What's going on? Notifications. Look at emails. Did my agent say anything? My manager say anything? Right. What's going on? Whatever. So it's just like I get up, I shut all that out. Yeah. Either I just jump out of my bed like, or I got on my knees, I just pray. Pray okay. about not knowing. Pray about I'm confused. Pray I don't even know what to say. Like yeah. just getting it out. Yeah. Obviously being thankful that I'm awake and I'm able to change, make a difference in my life mm-hmm. because I'm conscious of that and able to move on that. Yeah. So at peace with that. And then sometimes I go out and pray and I meditate. Sometimes I forget. I, I won't even pray. I get up. Next thing I know, I'm brushing my teeth. Up. That moment, stop right there. It's going to like, yo, it's okay to be where you're at. Right. ADD past your ADD when, you're right, when you woke up in the morning. Like, Same. Sit down, <laughs> accept where you're at. Accept yeah. You've already yeah. done it. You're right there. Because then you can move on. All right, let me go and pray. Yeah. And that's part of meditation, right? Um, I've talked a little bit with Maddie actually about this in her episode about Mm -hmm. how meditate, or maybe it was on our Instagram live, but about how meditation is accepting where you're at. It's accepting your thoughts, Uh, right? The Anapana, Anapana, that's another one Mm. I was studying through there. Anapana focuses on just breathing meditation. Yes. Breathing. It's all breathing, focusing. Like I would always automatically, when I close my eyes, I basically automatically count how many sounds I hear. I hear a bird, Ooh, I hear a car, yeah. I hear my AC going, I hear the trees, I hear the wind. Then I close my eyes, I hear myself. That's seven things. And automatically I would go on to there, focus on my breathing, finding a focus point and accepting where I'm at. Yeah, they'll tell you inhale, exhale, whatever actions you need to do. You're going to always try to do it on the pace that you're hearing, it, right? Yeah. You're going to always try to be in tune and focus. Then you're focusing on that. No, it'll teach you basically you're listening to me. Listen to me, but don't listen to me. You're yeah. listening to yourself. Focus on your body. I'm breathing this. It's a normal breath. 
I don't have to keep up on any pace as long as I'm aware of all my actions and accepting, yeah. breathing and accepting. So I would use that and get into their meditation. Um, I was a big, like I already, you already knew, I was a big like gearhead when I was younger and still going on here and there, like in drifting and race car driving. Mm -hmm. I would just be like, all right, let me go buy some car parts or <laughs> let me go look at my truck and be like, no, what, what can I add this time? Seriously, let's get, I like these wheels versus I need this, whatever like that. What can I do for myself? Like self-love. Right. I deserve this. Right. I'm normally just focused on what I need to in my craft. I get so involved in it. I'm just like, all right, right. I need to come back. I am a human still. I am a son of, of, of four. I need to go in here. Let me go and say, hey, what's up to my mom? Let me just go check on my brother. Let me see what my little sister's up to because I know she's going to challenge everything I say because she's so damn smart. But Sisters. at the same time, <laughs> let me just go find out everything like going on. And literally, what do I feel like doing today? Like I had a dream. Like if I was dreaming right now, what would I dream about? Blah, blah, blah. How does that make me feel? Let's do that. I'm in Atlanta, right? Now. I was when I was in Atlanta up there at that time. I was like, all right, we're quarantined. You can't do anything with any people. Okay, right. I have a truck. There's mountains here. I've never been outside the city. Let me go kayak and just do some adventure wow. shit. Like, damn, all right, all right, cool. Let me go meditate on a mountain. I, I love that. It's, yeah, it's either I was, I'm an island boy, city boy, so I'm either used to New York building or I'm used to the beach sand. Yeah. So I'm like, they got mountains up in here? Oh, so I'm going <laughs> to go mountain and just go yell. Like, literally, go. I, I would have to go with two buddies because during quarantine, I had five people and we only stayed around that five people. Or uh, anytime we needed to see people, those five people. You can't break it out. I see you on with some of my social media with somebody else. Bye. But it would be like, um, I would go out with those people and I'd go out like Stone Mountain or something. And then I would have them stay at the base of the mountain. One person yeah. like 10 feet away from me, one person at the base of the mountain when the walkers are coming up. So when they hear someone yell, they'll be like, they'll hit now. I'll just yell. I'll yell. If I need to cry, cry, yell, scream, that. cuss, whatever. I'll just yell. And then my friends will be down there. They'll help me yell. Ah! They'll be doing, <laughs> he's okay. He's okay. No, no, he's okay. No, he's just like, I had to do that too. Me. I did that over so, the 101 highway. Uh, a couple nice. months ago, I, I yelled the F word. It, it needed to yeah, happen. Well, I probably just blew but up. No, like I, said, I need it. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's just stuff we need to do. Like I just get up there, yell, and just rip my shirt or something and just act stupid and just get yeah. it out of my system. Yeah. And then I, one time I just did that, dropped down the ground, just crying. Just, I was just like, but then I was out of laughter. I was just like, mm -hmm. looking at myself like, this is what I need to do. Just yeah. get it off. And then like, me astral projecting out my side of myself, looking down at myself like, you good now? <laughs> like, you good? Like, like, like what next? And yeah. just just finding out those little stuff you need to do, having those conversations. Someone come to my mind, I'm going to call mm -hmm. them. I'm like, oh, I know the last time we called, it was, it was, eh. but, you know, just thinking about you saying, hey, no, I don't want to get back with you. But just thinking about you, just saying it, click. And then, like, the next one, hey, bro, remember whatever, whatever? I don't know. I thought about when we were 12. And I push when you like you asked me to push on a skateboard and I didn't instead I hit the back and knock you off but I hurt myself remember or I just want to say I love you or just think thinking of anything and just moving on that yeah and uh, I stopped texting as much like I'm sorry I was busy with family yesterday and you're texting me normally you know I like to call oh, I leave good? my voice text uh, oh, yeah. yeah yeah so I leave my voice text to think of somebody if I couldn't call I leave a voice text like yeah. yo I wanted you to hear my voice saying I wanted to hear let me hear more about you call me back mofo or whatever yeah. like that yeah. Just moving on there, anything in the moment, just thinking and like just appreciating all I've been through, all the hardships, and I'm still here. I'm still mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and, and something you said to me um, that's been kind of replaying in your head is not only this journey of self discovery and finding yourself, but that mentality of always get back up that resilience that no matter what happens in your life, whether it's something outside in the world that's happening, something that's happening inside of you, whether they're connected, whatever it is, um, get back up. Um, do you want to add to that a little bit of why that's something that repeats so much? Um, Cause I love that. That term get back up. Not only is just a statement, it's a being of discovery. It's a, I don't know when I hear it, it's an enlightenment. It's obviously enlightenment. It's something yeah. we speak all the time, but enlightenment is forever. You can yeah. never get to enlightenment. Yeah, I've got it. Right, enlightenment right. is something that's experienced. You can keep going on. So when I use the word, the term, get back up, it's a continuous thing. Yeah. We went back to the marathon. So it's a journey mm -hmm. of something you must keep doing. Right. You must. It must. Right. You. In all positivity, it will go on. It will mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want that to be. But right. At the same time, you're accepting. And hey, you have to change it. Get back up. And get back up. You, or when you get back up, you're going to somehow always be better than you were before. Right. Because you know well, that. You had that teacher to move forward. Yeah. And get back up also 
it's a phrase that gives you power. It's an empowering phrase and it gives you the ability to participate in what is going to continue to go on with or without you. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, it, it, it's, everything's going on. It must go on. Like, so get back up. I just, I love that that implies, Hey, you're a part of this. Hey, you matter. Hey, your voice. And like you, cause for me, even making this podcast, I didn't think. Which is I knew- dope. Which is dope. Thank uh, you. Is dope. <laughs> but I didn't think, I didn't think I mattered. I didn't think I had an, uh, a voice that could could help carry something like this. And when I started focusing on something that was going on without me, which was the movement of talking about mental health and, and how I've always wanted. And when I was diagnosed, I wanted people to talk about it more casually to help end the stigma so that I didn't have to continually feel the shame of what is not my fault. So, um, I finally got to a breaking point and that's why I kind of love brokenness. Um, I know we're all broken, but I hit a breaking point, you know, when you have the like, uh, just kind of broken. And then you have the rut where you're like, Oh, I'm like, shit, I'm, I'm not feeling great right now. And that's where I was. Uh And that's how I reached, um, the point of making this, um, and a couple other amazing things happened along the way to get people motivated with me and excited about it. But, um, yeah, I, I love that. Get back up. You saying that, I just feel it. And, and I, and I now I'm going to be repeating your phrase. <laughs> I'm adding it to my collection of phrases. All right. All right. All right. You, yeah. You got it. It's, it's all yours. You know, it's for all of us. It's- it is something else you mentioned um, that I'm curious if, if you've noticed this along the way of your self care journey, as I have noticed the more mindfulness we practice of, um, and I'm, I'm, I feel like a guppy on my, um, my trauma healing and on my inner child, mm-hmm. the stuff I experienced growing up, I'm new to really actually facing it. Um, I've known it's there forever. Cause I know I'm triggered mm-hmm. left and right. But, uh, have you noticed that the more we, uh, give our mind over to sit with these emotions and these thoughts and the, the, the experiences of the past that have happened to us, the more memories that start to pop up and present themselves to us. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Um, yeah, because it feels like, oof, it's deep. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if you were to look at like a level, like if it was a, a flat ground, I'm doing like a chart, if it was a chart and obviously there's another vertical, like a 90 degree angle, yeah. it would show every level that you go to. It's just preparing you for the next obstacle. Yeah. And as long as you're aware of, of growth, you don't have to know exactly where it's at because there's always outside growth that we don't even realize that we can't see it perceive. It's just always a level. Now you've made it to the next, next level to see this. And when not, when I mean, see it actually, when, when it happens to you, you're able to know the subtext of it, of what's going on and what you've overcame through it. Yeah, you're right. Even if it's the, even if it's the same thing, sometimes, Oh yeah, I did see that on it, but I looked at it that way and I understand it that way. And now that I understand it all from three sides, I was able to take their side, accept it. It might not be my truth, but right. I took that side, accept it. Right. I'm obviously getting my side to cross through, and then I'm seeing it from a third point perspective. Mm-hmm. So then being able to see that, finding the subtext of it. Right. And then and like you said, you, you can gain that awareness of it all and, and do with it what you will, what is most beneficial to you and your growth, and rise above and beyond, you know? Um, but I, I love these talks with you because I feel uh, like, I feel like you sharpen me. <laughs> what? It's always back to iron sharpens iron. <laughs> it yeah, is, you know? Yeah. Clang, clang, clang. Let, let me call Lisa back. <laughs> clang, 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 clang. That's all we're doing over there. So oh my God. Uh, I think that's going to be your ringtone when you call me. So clang, clang, clang. Just clang, metal sharpen. Clang, 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 clang. I'm like, uh, uh, hold on one second. I uh, love put it. Put it on silent. I'll call it back. <laughs> you know, uh, so kind of overall what we have been talking about um on so many different topics so is uh how things are always going to be changing because that's the nature of the way the world works it's the way humanity works but how do we ensure from here on out whether we're talking about mental health or self-care or um this whole entire movement um to completely abolish any type of racism or, or, or systemic oppression in this country, how do we continue to change for the better each day? How do we continue to change? It's just that I'm not going to say force empathy upon everyone. It'd be nice if everybody had, yeah, if everybody could, because in general, if in a, in an absolute world, 
that would be the ultimate thing for everyone. It's empathy. Empathy, so, not sympathy. Yes, yes, yes. Empathy and, 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 and able to accept. Because then sometimes yeah. some, some people do accept or they, they won't accept. And they know, like, I know people that, like, found out they're actually racist. Like, you confront them and they find out, like, wow, I've been racist my whole life. Yeah. And then some, are, and then they accept that or whatever. And I'm like, okay, you can move on from that now. Now, what do you want to do? That's the, that's the thing right. about it versus some people, they can see that and they don't want to accept it. They're hurt and they're so offended. Like they're actually offended with themselves. And on right. the inside, on the outside, they're very defensive about it or anything like that. It's just overall, I was, yeah, I would say it comes back to empathy and like seeing that and wanting change. You want change. Yeah. Obviously change is going to be what's never happened before. Right. For things that, yeah. Cause that's what change is. It's something different than the moment before. Cause yeah. obviously it wasn't working. Right. So we would need change on that. So mm-hmm. seeing that from these laws getting changed and police, police uh, like departments getting defunded and refunded where it, where it needs to go. Obviously like going to higher ups, it's really mm-hmm. the higher ups where it's coming from anywhere. That's all the other stuff going on. I won't go into detail between right. that to exchange any organization. It's exchange. If right. you like actually seeing what the issue is sitting aside from everything else, fixing that and then bring that back to everything else to build and fix everything else because everything on all sides needs to be changed. Absolutely. Yeah. I, so. I read something that was saying, um, ignorance is not innocence. And most people think that, you know, ignorance is bliss. If I don't have to face it, if it doesn't affect me and I'm predominantly obviously talking about people with white privilege. Um, mm. but, uh, it's like you said, you had a friend that didn't realize that he was racist. And yeah, like, I said, yeah, and, and I'm not one to explain it to everyone. I don't call it free. Right. I call it free labor. Right. I'm not giving any free labor. Yeah. Even you, you got to do the work for yourself. Yeah. So he came, he came the other day with his organization. He's like, I got like 6,000 copies. Like I got uh, not 6,000. That's a ridiculous amount of paper. He's like, I got, I think it was like 60 or something like that. Don't, 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 don't pro me. It was like, <laughs> HB six, uh, HB 636 talking about the accountability law for police. Like, you know, we get strikes. Mm-hmm. They should get strikes. This should be a list all the other stuff going on there. And he gave me some paperwork I gave him and he's like printing it out. And he's like, all right, I got this for you. And then he was asking me questions and long as how it came into it, I ended up explaining to him what I didn't. I told him he needs to look it up. And he's like, with all lives matter. Yeah, like, I'm, obviously all lives matter. Right. We're just the ones that we're just hurt that we have to say black lives matter. Right. Obviously, yeah. like that the fact that you even have to yeah, say it, to say the it. fact that we're yeah. even here. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. And yeah, it's even him not seeing that and that start to break in there. And I was like, mm-hmm. imagine you had a family. And it's a, it's a family of four siblings, uh, two boys, two girls, and uh, you're Ruby. Ruby has pink skin, and you're Ruby, and uh, Ben has uh, white skin. Um, Carl has purple skin, and the other, uh, other, other one has a dog. Imagine Ruby, her struggles, everything she has to do. It feels like everyone's handicapped in front of her and everything that they do. They're excelling in. You have to work twice as hard, and you're still not appreciated. Mm-hmm. So that you cry out to your mom, Ruby matters. Mm -hmm. But then Ben and Charles go, hey, we all matter. Mm -hmm. They always get everything on there. You get a black sheep of it. You're getting hit down with it. Since you've existed, you've always got the short stick, everything through there. But then Ben, your your older, your other brother, the the purple one, he is always through this, that. Everything's handed to him. Give on that. He's right in this way. He doesn't see the pain you're dealing with. He just goes, hey, we're all going through pain. There's different ways of gauging pain. So we all matter. Mm -hmm. So then that's like your mother saying, hey, oh, uh, I either love you all, or you guys have an argument, let's deal with this. Versus mother, mother of government, well, pulling aside Ruby, yes, you matter. Let's deal mm-hmm. with this. What do we need right. to fix this? And then yeah. going back to the family, and then let's build as a unit. Right. We're saying, Ruby, how do and, we make you feel as good and as celebrated as everyone else? Yeah, all the struggles you've been through, yes, you can never, right. you can never, we can never be like, take that back. It's going to always be that. Let's mm-hmm. fix that. Me, Ruby, now, Ruby, let's fix this. Let's fix this. Me and you. You pull a child aside out of another group of children, you deal right. with the problem as a one-on-one with them, not as a group, right? Because mm-hmm. you'll be right. left out. There's another way falling between the cracks, right. falling between the lines. So deal with that. And then I hit it to him. And I went in probably a little bit more detail. Obviously, I was pissed because I yeah. didn't want to go there. Right. And um, it got into it, and he was just shook. He probably didn't say anything. He is, um, and he's, he's, dating, he's dating a queen. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, so he's just like seeing it. He's like, yeah, we're, my family loves her, whatever like that. She's black, whatever you shouldn't even have to say black. Right. Like you have to bring that up on anything on through there. Like right. automatically you see me walking through my mom's neighborhood and my mom's, she, she's a little, a little darker than your complexion. She mm-hmm. has a, a brighter complexion. So they see me walk through and then like walking through or walking her dog or something like that automatically. 
they look at you like, hey, at first, before saying, hey, like, hey, what is he doing here? Huh? I never saw him before. Or I wonder what he's doing. Is he walking someone's dog? Or is, is anything going on versus those looks, those, those thoughts that come into your head? And I had my buddy who was explaining that. He's like, yeah, I have those in my head. First thing, it does suck. I'm going to think in the subtext, he doesn't belong here. Or right. does he belong here? I'm going to question it. Should that even be questioned? Versus yeah. getting a double look, me walking down the street. I'm a very eccentric dude. My style changes, anything like that. People talk to me and be like, and I see me in person. Oh, yeah, I was talking to you. It's good to have you aboard. I was talking to you on the phone. Uh, you're definitely not what I expected. What did you expect? <laughs> the, way you, the, way you, oh, the, way, the way you sound, I didn't expect to see this. Like, what you expected? Or when I was younger and I was just trying to change my vocabulary, like, bro, why why you be talking white, dog? Like, or, or no, mm-hmm. uh, uh, no. Uh, or like my friend would be like, why, why are you talking white? You sound, you don't sound black. Like, mm-hmm. what's black to you? I'm like, right. go, go back. What do you mean? Like, what's black? <laughs> like, uh, you got to be a hood or you got to be a sellout. You can't be in between or whatever. Right. Like, and then get on to and like push it on those, those uncomfortable conversations that need to be brought up that, uh, um, like that video of the you know, little, the little white girl, like, like challenging her dad going back and her dad's a cop and he's saying, this is how it is, honey. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, you're not doing the research. And she's just schooling him wow. <laughs> on every, on, on a whole Send me that research. video. I haven't seen that one. Oh, really? Oh, no, yeah. I no, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you. Sean King had posted it up. Okay. And so, yeah, it was just. I was all over. So then she's telling me, like, she's just diving to him. And then he's just like, go watch TV. Like, go, go, go to your oh. room. Like, like, anything like that versus just the way stuff is held. Like, I don't know. I can go on. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just- well, no, and thank you for that. Because that, that's what I love about being able to use and that this platform exists now and that you um, are letting – us like dedicate this podcast I say us it's a couple people behind me but I'm mainly it's just me (laughs) but like that you're joining this is temporary to share your whole journey from from every um different facet of it because it's for people who can relate to you this brings comfort and for people who cannot relate to you it opens eyes and it's it it Either way, there's change involved, and that's what we want. That's what you and I are working towards, you know. Um, and so, never stop sharing your story. Never stop speaking out. Um, I'll let you back on this podcast as many times as you want because I love talking with you. Like I said, we're sharpening each other over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's 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 just a really really. Uh, I, I just respect you so much, and I love you so much, Marvin. And I'm, I'm. I so love proud. you and respect you too. That's why I'm always just like, all right, Lisa, calling. All right, I know she's gonna be dope. I know <laughs> no, she's thank be you. Dope. Is, and I didn't want to take away time from your family. Tell them I said no. Nah, you're, you're good. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I will. Yeah, I still like every day. I'm dedicating to another family member. Yeah. So like, my mom doesn't even know I'm here yet. Like, I showed up at my <gasps> aunt's, and then I showed up at my brothers, and every day I show up at someone's door. Oh, so, like, yeah. I love that. So I'm just gonna be like, all right. So mm. I could have did it worse and showed up in like in a hazmat suit. Like, all right, what's <laughs> up? But it was just, I, I got one. Amazon. Yeah. I, yeah. Amazon, oh they'd be on point. I had a pair, even though I made one out of Ikea bags like a month ago. Yeah. But now oh I got a God. legit one. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Oh I got a custom God. mask for it and a little air for my hat. And, like, but it's crazy. Yeah. But oh my God. I love just, that. Yeah. Every day I'm just surprising everybody. I'm like, all right. I might, like <laughs> take a picture of my, take a picture of a truck on my brother's lawn and be like, yo, I'm here. Oh my and just God. like, come outside. Yeah, like, what's up? Oh, what's up? It's like the old, like, 90s sweepstakes videos. You won this with the little giant, with the giant check. Like, yo, you got a giant check of Marvin time. It's like, I'm about to, yeah. I love no, that. No, you can't cash it in. It's only IOUs. Like, only IOUs. So. Well, hey, I don't want to take much more time away from your family, but are there any other things, um, in closing remarks that, that you want to leave with us um, in the audience for this is temporary. Um, to everybody, yo, this is just temporary. Life is just temporary. Mm-hmm. It's just borrowed energy. It's like, do what you can, man, especially with everything going on, on top of everything going on. Yes, there's always something you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, your, your message has to get out there. Get your message out in some kind of way. It doesn't need to go viral to make a point. Because if somebody's listened to it and you've done it, like I've just now, it made its point to exactly. where you to go to. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, on top of that, yeah, man, get, just get back up, y'all. Wherever you at, you can get back up. If you can think get back up, you can say get back up with your mouth mm-hmm. and your toes can move with it. That means you can stand, you can get back up. Mm-hmm. So that's figuratively speaking, obviously physically if you can, but figuratively just keep on moving. This is, we're not here forever. We got 
got to change. Like, I don't know. I don't want 200 years from now, if we're all not in heaven or in the next world, the world's over. Basically, somebody can, you know, Google on their eye computer my name and find out, like, yeah. I was behind something bigger than myself. Yeah, I wanna, exactly. we, we all have to be behind something bigger than ourselves. I agree. And I think that that is the motivation and momentum. I've often said this, that the antidote to depression is not joy or anything like that. The antidote to depression is um, momentum. And to gain mm. momentum and motivation, you have to have something bigger than yourself, something that's yes. pa- that you're passionate about, something that matters to pull you out and make it worth your while. And sometimes self-love, self-love is not selfish. I've said that a lot um, yes. because, and self-care is not selfish because you have to care about yourself in order to be of service to others and of service yes. to the government. You have to be um, good to help someone else first. Yeah, yeah. So I've said body. that a lot, that, that that is not selfish. Self-care is not selfish. So that is bigger than yourself. If, if saying, hey, I need to do this for me, um, or not even answer that phone you know? call. Answer it back when you're ready. If exactly. If you can't handle it at that time or by, whether it's a Definitely. Toxic, toxic person or not, you have to yeah. take care of yourself. And then like self-love, like I said, always working out, everything like that. Yep, yep. Moving around, stunts and stuff. I try not, yeah. not so many. That's for insurance purposes. I don't, I don't do stunts. <laughs> we didn't even so. get into your dance background. Oh, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my gosh. People are just going to have to stay tuned. Y'all follow Marvin on Instagram. I'm going to link his Instagram and the What Can I Do Instagram account as well um, and, and whatever else, um, you know, resources to be able to find and follow Marvin, support him, love him like I do. He's awesome. Um, Marvin, love I love you, you so much. Man. Thank you again. Neighbors, the neighbors popping on the fence like, what's going on? Love you, Lacey. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. <laughs>